So I want to move into spoiler territory now a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. We have, uh, my understanding is, is uh, two pod bays. And in the pilot, we find out that the, the other one decompressed or was sheared off. I think that may have been the part that was that was stuck yeah. in, the, in the revolving section of the ship. That's, that's a fun image to think of. Um, and that had all the command <laughs> staff uh were there anyone else key that were that were in that that pod or all the all the chief scientists oh, it's geez. basically like first class versus uh okay. steerage and uh so the whole first class section got sheared off well notes on um on travel interplanetary travel to anyone watching don't do that kind of <laughs> kind of distribute your ranks a little bit just in case something like that happens yeah, um, on it, it, you know, one of the things we're trying to explore is human foibles and 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 ego. In that case, it's ego. You know, people we talk about it in the fourth episode of why it was like that, vague, uh, vaguely a little bit. And it's you know, it was more you you were more prominent if you got to be in the in the right. officers wing. So that's so people fought to get in it. The one of the things that. I hope you guys lean into a little bit more. Maybe not. Maybe it was just a, a storytelling component for this one episode. Is um, the the software is not the best out there that's running no. the shit. It's caught the the, the, um, the reads reads character. She's like, you know, it's it's this this software is caught in a such and such. It's a it's a common problem because it's it's older. It's like, oh man, this ship isn't even running on the the best technology that earth has no there has to be why is that these ships were slapped together because there was a yeah. rush yeah they had to get off the planet so they're slapped together wow okay and apparently earth has the technology to send people a- a- after them as well if uh this yeah, part, they're, one they're... target proves to be viable well no there's there's um we we know of uh 16 um, arcs that were being built when we launched. We don't know how many were being built after that. Um, and we were just the first to go. Each one is targeted at a different exoplanet. So they're all unique planets. Yeah, just to see where they can... Well, it's more complicated than that, but basically, yeah. I, the first group is going to different exoplanets, and then the groups following are families and things going to the same, you know, each of the of the same exoplanets. Okay. And... Um, that's the plan, but we don't know what happened because we were the first ones to go and we've lost touch. So Earth has gone dark. Yeah. Well, as far as we know it has, yeah. In the yeah, in the first one. That's that's scary in and of itself because they yeah. we, we see a scene with a, a family member and and this is the last message that they received. And it's been four or so years since they they communicated with them. So something's something's up, you know. I love that you're planting the seed that yes, there's a lot of stuff that's that's happening on board the ship. But I mean, the word alien is is bantered about in in the teaser as well for for the rest of the season. Things are going to be happening outside of the ship that are going to you know put the people on board in their own situation as well uh, for oh, a couple yeah. of different this, directions. This show is so full of twists and turns. You won't see any of it coming. Hopefully, it's uh, it's uh, it's a journey based on the information that we have right now. There there's not supposed to be any other human ships following them. For the foreseeable future, right? Well, maybe in in you know ten years, their their families will be coming. Okay, I think we say. So otherwise, they are out there alone. Yeah. All right. Would okay. you potentially continue the show on the planet surface? Potentially. Okay. One of the things that's that's continually scary is uh, how quickly um, reality is catching up to science fiction. Uh, yeah. Or, what we have in our minds. And I'm interested to see what kinds of stories uh, you're going to tell uh, that kind of leverage a lot of the the modern issues that we're dealing with, with tech, with sociological issues into the show. Can you tease us a little bit about that? Uh, well, two, th- that was sort of two issues. The first issue yes. is science is moving so fast issue has already bitten us in the butt. Um, and, and, and it happens all the time. So we just have to let it slide off our backs. But um, when we started shooting, as far as people knew, Proxima B was the closest exoplanet. And so that's where we're headed is Proxima B. So it's a real world. Yeah, it's a real planet. 
and it's it's four point it's like four light uh four light years away i think since then we've discovered others that are closer and we've also discovered more about proxima b um that make it less likely to be out oh. in real life yeah. so we're just forgetting about it we can't you know what can we do I, um, you know what we we got more we got better information proxima b turns out that it's the best candidate after all you yeah. know i mean yeah. This is the kind of thing that happens because science is moving so fast. The Webb telescope, you know, every day is finding more exoplanets. Webb wasn't even launched when we started writing this show. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, uh, we, we've already established in the pilot that we've got uh, characters from a number of different countries. They have different, not just because they're from different countries, but, you know, they have, they have different personal uh, objectives as well. How are you guys leveraging the diversity of the cast and, you know, the diversity of the audience that's going to be watching them in turn? We don't get into the diversity of the cast that much in terms of, you know, it's not like, you know, the Russians are trying to stop the Americans or right. we're not doing any of that. We're, we're leaving all that behind. Um, it's more interpersonal things. Um, so really, we don't really leverage uh, the the ethnicity or the nationality of anybody at all. That's that's not part of our story. But there are people, you know, there are people who think they know better and have better ideas. Um, there are people that are scared of things that everyone else is not scared of, and so they want to avoid it. You know, there's there's constant flashing about what should we be doing because none of these people are in command really and none of them are really experts there's that that kind of clashing yeah i think that the one of one of the draws of of the show is going to be that these people are, are not the ones who are supposed to be the ones in charge and yet they're going to have to figure out a way to make it happen otherwise they all die and they're going to have what do you do in this situation you do the best you can um and and you see you see how things uh shake up yeah that's exactly what the show's about basically it's it's you know people rising to their best selves to to survive yeah. you know above their best selves really because they're they weren't prepared for this they were supposed to be trained once they got to the planet to do things on the planet not to do things on the ship one of the things that i expected the show to tackle at some point but uh didn't expect it in the pilot was <laughs> the people who are on the people who, there are people who are on the ship who hacked themselves on yes and they you know that's a very with with, uh, with everything that we see today with systems that are just not as safeguarded as they should be any any digital file can be changed anyone can be manipulated into thinking that they're supposed to be on another arc so that someone else can take their place. You know, the, the, the human brain is, is the most hackable thing and it's happening in real time on this ship. There are, there are forces at work aboard, um, that are, that are doing things solely for their own self-preservation and not at all, um, for the, the greater good of the group as yeah. evidenced by the murder at the end of episode one. Can you talk a little bit about that? Which part of that? The, uh, so we've, the we've got, away? yes, the stowaway. He is a smart guy, but he's not a, he's not smart at life support, which is what he's supposed to be doing. Um, so he, he hacked his way onto the ship and, and it's unfortunate that the person he replaced was the head of life support and, uh, almost killed everybody as a result of it. Right. But he said, I know people on this ship, uh, who have secrets and I'm guessing that knowledge is what killed him. So there's going to be, yeah. so, there's, there's lots of secret. There are lots of people with lots of secrets on this ship. The opportunities for character growth are just ripe here. They're as fertile as that dang soil that got, uh, that got <laughs> snuck aboard. Um, and, uh. I, I'm interested to see uh, what kind of uh, what kind of science we're going to see on screen that's going to kind of mirror, you know, what NASA and what a lot of these other companies would like to achieve um, on other planets yeah. here. We're yeah, see, like, yeah, so whenever that. whenever we can, we base it on real technology. We can't always do that, but whenever we can, we do. Um, and there's, you know, it, I, I'm a science geek. I, for fun, I read science magazines. So, 
it, it's a little bit, I, I do a little bit of banging my own head against the wall because I want to make it real, but I can't because it's, it just would screw up the story too bad. And I want this to be entertaining first and foremost and Absolutely. scientifically accurate secondarily. So is working with Dean still as much fun as it was working on the outpost? Yeah, he's, you know, he and I are, in terms of our taste, are the same person. You know, we're both science fiction geeks. We both love the same kind of storytelling. Um, neither of us can write without having a, a wink and a nod and a little sense of humor to it. Um, so this show is is not the heavy, dark sci-fi that that is very popular now, sort of the opposite. Um, and, you know, I love that stuff. I love watching it, but it's just not what I write. Um, it's much... It's 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 meant to be fun and entertaining. It's meant to be, you know, escapism, not right. Deep, dark, you know. <laughs> That's interesting. Analyzed for years, <laughs> that, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, but that doesn't mean that it can't have substance. Well, of course, it has substance. It has plenty of substance. In the same way that the, you know, the early Star Treks did, the original and the Next Generation did. It's, there's a lot of metaphor in there. And there's a lot of studying of the human condition and how we're our own worst enemy and, and that kind of thing. Right. Uh, but it's not, uh, you know, it's just not dark. It's not real deep and dark, mm -hmm. you know, full of, of, uh, of almost pseudo religious meaning underneath it. There's none of that, in it, you know, okay. It's uh, you, you said it, you know, there's, there are different kinds of science fiction because it, it can be, it can flex itself into almost every other genre that exists. But if you're not escaping from the real world into another space, uh, uh, you, that's, that allows you to appreciate the time that you've, that you've been away from your normal world. Mm -hmm. You really have to have, be in a specific mindset to enjoy it. And with this, yeah. you can just, you don't have to like place yourself there. It looks like you can just, turn it on and have a good time and have frankly have a good time with your whole family you don't have to you know wait until the the younger ones are in bed right that's the idea yeah it's, it's good stuff you know like one of my favorite science fiction uh properties i guess because it's been every it's been a book a movie and every a series and everything is dune but dune is it's almost like a religious experience you know it's it's so far into what we actually know the setting is that um i you know it's like i'm could i write that is what goes through my head i love watching it but that's just that's not that's yeah thanks for watching this clip from dial the gate you can find the full live stream shows on our youtube channel or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule see you on the other side <laughs>